What's up guys, it's Devin. I'm back with a brand new type of video. I've never done this type of video before. I'm super excited about it. I will briefly say what I'm doing and I'm gonna dive into some very specific numbers. So if you're into that, this video is definitely for you. This right here is gonna be my first Com C check out my cards submission um, for consignment on their website. For people who don't know what Com C is, it is a company called Check Out My Cards, which is very different than the platforms eBay or My Slabs. Um, for those who don't know, I'll do a quick comparison. eBay and My Slabs are websites that basically link buyers and sellers. So those platforms, you post your item for sale, somebody buys it, and then you have to ship that item. So those websites are basically middlemen and they take a percentage for connecting the two of the buyer and the seller together. Check out my cards is completely different. You can't sell an item on their website unless they have it in their possession. So the difference is I'm not shipping all these different items to different buyers. I am shipping them all to ComC directly. So I made a submission. There's 100 cards here, four cards here, 104 cards total. I will ship these all to ComC. I pay a per card processing fee to get them up onto their website and available for sale. And then from there, you pay other fees once a sale is made. But the whole point and difference of the two is that they can't be for sale until ComC has them in their possession. And then when somebody buys them and they're available for sale, a sale happens, somebody buys them, I don't have to ship each individual card, nor does ComC technically have to ship into each individual card. What happens is, let's say this card is listed, somebody buys it, let's say $50. When it happens, the sale happens, the money goes into my account, the card is no longer under my possession on the website, it then transfers to the buyer. It shows up in their account, it shows up on the website as being owned by them, and then from there, the buyer can choose to either relist it for sale, maybe they thought it was undervalued and they thought it was worth more, or they can choose to have it shipped to them. Now, the advantage for the buyer is you can buy cards from multiple different sellers. Let's say somebody bought this card and 50 other cards from 50 different sellers. They can then choose to have one bulk shipment sent to them of those 50 cards and pay one shipping label, which I think is anywhere between like 10 to $15. They have a really cheap standard shipping rate, ComC does. Um, so people like set builders or like player collectors, They'll go on this website, ComC, check out my cards, buy a bunch of cards, and instead of having to pay shipping labels for 50 different people and have to track 50 different you know, packages of getting their cards and all that, they just get it in one shipment from ComC because all the cards are in their possession. Check out my cards. So that's the difference between the two platforms. Now, you're probably curious about the selling rates and why I am doing some of these cards with ComC. So... I will go into a breakdown of that. First and foremost, there's different submission types. Um, so this right here is gonna be a select submission level. These are gonna be standard and they also have elite. Now the difference between the different submission levels is how much it costs for them um, to get the card for sale on their website and how long it takes. So these ones being select cost me a dollar a card to get processed by them and there's a turnaround time of two weeks. So these are cards that are a little bit more pricey, probably in like the 40, 50, 60, all the way up to $100 range. Anything valued higher than $100 automatically gets turned into their elite level uh, for ComC at $2 a card. <coughs> Sorry, <coughs> got a bug in my throat. So anything valued over $100 for a single card gets upgraded to the $2 level, the elite service. Um, that is just ComC's kind of rules and regulations. Now, I chose these four to go under the select level um, for a dollar a piece because I have $5 or so left in my account. Um, and when they process cards, they take the money from your ComC account. In order to get money added to your ComC account, you either have to sell a card or you have to add funds, which you have to pay sales tax on. So let's say you add $100 for me living in the state of Michigan, I would pay $106 to get $100 of credit into my ComC account. 
So I chose four cards because I have five something left in my account. That means I won't have to add money. Once these sell, I then will have money in my account for these cards to process behind me, which I'm gonna do under the standard level, which is a 100 card submission. So these four are just to get in there so I can build up some funds to basically pay for these processing at a later date. So these will take two weeks. <coughs> these will take two weeks to process. Um, and these are gonna sell anywhere for a total of like 200 to $250, somewhere around there. Um, they're all between like the 40 to $80 range for these cards. So they will help cover uh, my fees. Now, this is gonna be the standard submission, which costs 50 cents a card and takes up to 16 weeks for ComC to process. So that's a big difference. You pay 50 cents a card, which is cheaper, but it takes 16 weeks. This is the standard, the cheapest version, um, or the select is a dollar and they process it once they receive it within two weeks. So that's kind of the difference of the two submission levels. Um, these are 100 cards that I will do under the standard level. I will go through them and briefly show uh, what I picked to send in and kind of briefly tell you why. But I will first break down the difference of the two platforms as far as selling rates. So on eBay, let's take this Tyler Hero for example. Let's say it's worth $100 just for round numbers to make things easy. If I sell this card on eBay, $100, take away 12% selling fees. That's what my selling fees are for having an eBay store. I would turn $88. From there, I ship a $100 card, anywhere between $100 to $250, under a small flat rate box with the USPS, which is basically $815, I think it is. Um, but I round it up to $9 after my supply costs um, that go into putting that card into a small flat rate box. So minus $9 plus you gotta add the 30 cent processing fee per item sold um, on eBay. So you're talking about returning $78.70 for selling a card that you sold for $100 on eBay. Now, if you sold the same card for $100 on ComC, their seller fees are a lot lower. They are 5%. So let's say we take that $100 card. If I sold that card on ComC, $95 would go directly into my ComC account this card would no longer be in my possession. It would go into someone else's, the buyer's possession, and it would be away from my account. Now, we do have to account for a couple of things. The dollar processing fee, because I did the select level, so it was a dollar per card, and then you gotta think there is a shipping cost for me to get this card from me to ComC. But it's gonna be super cheap, because I'm gonna ship all 104 of these cards to ComC in one submission one shipping label. So let's say I do it medium flat rate box to make it easy. There's 104 cards. $15 in the cost is the cost divided by 104 cards. You're basically talking about 15 cents per card is what it costs me to ship to ComC. So $94 was what we were returning after we sold the card for $100 minus the 5% fees, which is $5, minus the dollar processing, which is the select level at a dollar get us to 94. Sorry, my phone was at 20% there. So took a $100 sale, minus $5 for the 5% sale fee on their website, minus the dollar for the submission level, which was the select processing the card. And now you take 15 cents away. You're talking about returning $93.85, which if you remember earlier, Selling the same card on eBay returned us seventy-eight seventy, so that's a big difference because you're talking about ninety-three eighty-five minus seventy-eight seventy. You're talking about an extra fifteen dollars going into your pocket. Now here's the one kicker: this is where people kind of I wouldn't say manipulate it, but you can choose to be smart on ComC. If you want to cash out, now the ninety-three eighty-five that I was talking about isn't what's going to show up in your ComC account. The ninety-five is because the dollar for the processing fee and the 15 cents aren't necessarily coming out of your ComC account. The 15 cents per card to ship is what, outside of that, that's the $15 that you're paying to ship it. So that's completely separate. I'm just doing this as an overall. Um, and then the dollar processing would already be taken out prior to this sale. So 
$95 is going to be in your account. Now, if you wanted to cash out money from your ComC account, you pay a 10% withdrawal fee. So let's say I want to take out the 95, I'd return 8550 would be what I returned from the $100 sale, which is still higher than the 7870 that we would have returned from eBay. It's a little bit more. Now, what the interesting thing is, and what a lot of people do, is instead of cashing out directly, you have that $95 from selling this card in my account. That means I have store credit with checkout my cards. Now, let's say I sell all 104 of these cards that I have, the four higher-end ones and the 100 lower teal singles. Let's say I return $1,500. Let's say total sales was $1,500. You take away the 5%, I have $1,425, $1,425. I can choose to buy one mid-tier single with that $1,425, or I can cash out. If I cashed out, you take away the 10%, I return $1,282.50. That's straight as a check to my PayPal, however you want to cash out. They have a couple different ways. Or, instead of taking that $1,282, I can just get buy a card for fourteen fifty, and have that one card shipped to me and pay like ten bucks. So we'll say that's the difference between the number after the five percent sales fee, and then taking the additional ten percent. It's a difference of one hundred sixty-seven dollars and fifty cents. So what some people do is instead of just taking the cash out, they'll use that additional equity that they have. In this case, the additional one hundred sixty-eight dollars and buy a card on Com C for $14.50, and then just have that single card shipped to you and pay like a $10 shipping cost instead of paying a cash out fee of $168. So there's a lot of different ways that you can do it. Um, the initial cost for selling is 5% of the transaction. Um, that's their sales fee on the Com C website. Then if you wanna cash out your store credit, it's an additional 10% fee but you can choose to just buy a single from their website. So there's a couple different ways to do it, but even, just so you guys can see the numbers, even if you take the 5% sales fee, you get to 95, and you just directly cash out, you're still making more than what you would for selling it on eBay because that additional shipping cost of shipping that one, that one card. So, that's kind of some background of check out my cards. That is kind of going to be my goal. A lot of this stuff here that I go over in this 100 card standard submission, bulk submission that I'm going to do. It's a lot of stuff that was sitting in my value boxes. I'm not going to shows as often right now um, with the family and having Mac. Uh, um, and just trying to enjoy family time. So because I'm not going out as often, I don't have the time to process and list these on eBay. I don't have the time to go to shows, um, so I want ComC to take care of it. It's going to be a 50 cent processing fee, and from there, I'm only going to pay a 5% sales fee. And then I'll sell all these over time, and I'll try to buy one to two mid tier singles um, with the money that I gather from selling all these. And that way, I can turn my low end stuff into a mid tier single, a valuable item for me. So <coughs> that's my thought process. Um, for this first submission. Now, I did a little bit of everything um, in this submission because I'm trying to figure out what sells on the website. Obviously, I haven't sold on the website in a very long time. I've never done my own submission. Um, I dabbled with buying some cards and trying to relist them, like some flipping directly on ComC, but that was like two years ago, so it's been a while. So this is going to be my first submission. I tried to just mix it up. Um, I looked at all this stuff, so I will say this. I tried to only send in things that I could sell for $4 plus, um, and I tried to make sure it was an item that only had three or less listed. Um, so like if I'm sending in this Kyrie Irving, I wanted to make sure there wasn't 20 copies of this 2019 Optic Kyrie Hollow graded by PSA. <clears throat> Sorry, I got a bug in my throat. <coughs> Whew. I'm trying to recover from COVID right now, so the coughing has been the absolute worst side effect. Um, so I do apologize about this, but I just want to get through and get this video done for you guys. Um, 
So that was kind of my requirements. I wanted it to be able to sell for $4 or higher. Um, I didn't want there to be any higher than three of the exact same card listed. Um, for that purpose, I wanted it to be kind of rare and scarce to where I wasn't competing against you know, 20 different people to be the lowest price because obviously the lowest price item is going to sell. Um, that's just how it works. If there was an item that had more than three listed, it had to be A, a popular player, or B, a popular card. Um, so like, let's take this MJ for example. It's a die cut. There's a bunch of different variations of this card. Um, this is card number 39 in the set. I wanna say there's like 40 or something. There's a ton of them. But they're all numbered out of 2300. I believe they're all die cuts. But there was a ton listed, but there wasn't the exact one of card number 39. So something like this, even though there was a ton listed, I was okay listing it because it's a Michael Jordan. He's one of the most popular players in sports, so I didn't mind setting it. Now, this Chetty Osman, I believe is going to be the only one or one other is listed on Com C. That's the only reason why I'm sending this one because it's a little scarce. Um, if somebody's trying to complete a checkerboard set or they're trying to complete the Chetty Osman Rainbow from Optic for that year, this is a card that's going to be tough to find. <coughs> so this would be one that I don't want a ton of copies. Now, if there was 20 copies of this card on Com C and the lowest listed was $10, I'm probably not sending it to Com C um, because that's a lot of cards to compete with and I don't think it's a very popular item. I don't think there's going to be 20 different people that want this card. Now, there might be 20 different people that want a numbered die cut MJ for $10, $15, whatever it sells for. So that's why I was okay sending this one. So that was kind of a basis of why I chose certain cards to go. Now, I will be able to tell... Um, as I do this, these are just some low level graded PSA items that, you know, I can't pay to ship these individually because you're paying four to $5 to ship them. And if you're paying four to $5 and they're selling for $10, you're literally taking half your profits away. But with Com C, I'm only paying the 50 cent listing fee. And then after that, the 5% sales fee. So some stuff like this, if I sell it for $10, is going to make sense. So that's kind of my thought process for the graded cards. And then these were just ones that I looked up. And it just made sense as far as the rarity, some of the names um, being numbered, kind of some less popular items, um, some memorabilia, some stuff that just doesn't have a ton of copies of the cards. Um, and that's why I decided to send these ones in. So a little bit of everything. There's some Pokemon, there's some basketball, um, baseball numbered rookies, football autos. Um, that's a tie dye on a 25. <coughs> I'm just going to do some scrolling here. <coughs> well, my throat takes a rest. My goodness. I'm sorry if you're listening to the video at this point. I just want to finish it because I feel like I put 20 minutes into this video already. Um, but there's some soccer, numbered football, Mike Trout, baseball, optic hollow. Um, so it's a mix of everything. Like I said, I'll definitely keep an eye on what sells quickly over the first week once it's listed and what's still sitting there after a couple of months. So that way I know when I make my next submission, that's a green palter out of 25 for UFC. That way I can kind of see what sells well, and I can kind of gather some personal information on what to submit the next time and what to avoid submitting because it's just sitting there and not selling. So this is definitely going to be a learning curve for me, um, but this is kind of my first submission. <coughs> I'm so sorry, by the way. Whew. All right, last little bit here. That's an atomic refractor, yellow diamonds, another checkerboard. A lot of rookie stuff. If it wasn't rookies, then it was some older school. Um, this is a couple vintage cards we're throwing in here. I think that's a 61 Pete Rose that I had picked up in a collection. Um, so that was a preview of what I'm going to submit. So this is 100 cards here. 
that I'm going to do under the standard level, which is the 50 cent per card. Um, that's what these are going to be. Um, so I think it came out to like $57 is going to be the cost um, because the graded cards take an additional 50 cents per card um, to list. So these are technically going to be a dollar per card for the graded cards and the raw cards will be 50 cents. So like the total cost for this, I think is going to be like $57 is what they said to list these hundred cards, which is stupid cheap. <laughs> basically 57 cents a card for them to list it, which is phenomenal. <coughs> and then these cards, like I said, I've already got a few bucks in my account. I will do under the select so they get in there in two weeks. Gives them a time to sell, get some money in my account so I can pay for the processing fees of this first 100 card standard submission. So that is kind of my thought process with um, Com C, what I'm doing with them. Um, I hope that gave you a lot of information if you didn't know about check out my cards um, So that way you can make a decision if you want to use them yourself or not um, Either way, I will have a list or a link. I'm sorry in my uh, bio of this video The about section that will have a link to my com C account. So in the in the coming weeks When these become live if you're interested in buying them um, you can do so off my Com C account. <coughs> and then in the next 16 weeks, once these ones become available, same thing. They will all be up there and available for sale. So super excited to give this a chance. Um, wanted to give you some insight of what I was thinking. Kind of very in-depth. I tried. I try not to leave any stone unturned so you guys could get all the information you need. Um, I do apologize again if you're listening up to this point about my voice. I have had a cough and COVID for about five, six days now, and the coughing has been the worst part. My throat's been killing me. My voice has been gone, so I do apologize for that, um, but I hope you guys enjoyed the video. I hope it was informative. If you have any other questions regarding ComC um, or my strategy or anything like that, um, don't hesitate to ask it in the comments. I try to reply to every single one. Um, I do see them and read them, so don't be afraid to ask questions there. Um, and make sure to follow me on my other social media accounts. I will have everything linked in the about page for this YouTube video. I hope you guys enjoyed and hope everyone has a great day and don't forget to smile. Later guys.